Hello, I'm Amara Jones, and today is Wednesday, January 28th. This is Caffeine TV, your daily news brief, here to take you through three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the real housewives. The first number of today is 59. This is the number of people who died in a string of suicide attacks in Jordan in 2005, but the vest of one of the suicide bombers, that of Shajida al-Rashahi, didn't go off, and since then she's been held in the possession of the Jordanian authorities. She's also the sister of one of the top aides to one of the founders of al-Qaeda in Iraq. Well, earlier this week, ISIS sent out Kenji Goto, one of the two Japanese hostages that we spoke about last week to say that if the Jordanian government didn't release her, that he, along with the Jordanian fighter pilot also being held by ISIS, would be executed. Well, today, the Jordanian government agreed to do just that, and there will be a prisoner exchange. Unfortunately, however, the Japanese hostage, one of them, was executed over the weekend. Now, this all occurs on a day of turmoil across the Middle East. Yesterday, Syrian artillery shells landed in Israel, and Israel responded last night with airstrikes against those positions, and today, Hezbollah, the militant group backed by Iran, fired on an Israeli military convoy in response to Israel killing weeks ago some of its members in an airstrike. In that attack today, two Israeli soldiers died and Israel has vowed to respond. And all of this takes place against the broader backdrop of the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the concentration camp of Auschwitz. And all of this is a good reminder to everyone in the region of what happens when hate spins out of control. The next number up today is 1500. That's the number of tweets which swept across the desert kingdom of Saudi Arabia yesterday with the hashtag Michelle Obama unveiled. Yesterday, Mrs. Obama joined President Obama and a large U.S. delegation in flying to Saudi Arabia on their way back from a state visit to India in order to pay their respects to Saudi Arabia's new king, Salman. Last week, we spoke about the fact that Salman's brother, King Abdullah, passed away. Well, when the doors of Air Force One flung open and Mrs. Obama stepped out, she stepped out with her head uncovered and it caused a sensation. Now, by law, Saudi women are required to go out in public with a veil. There's an exception for foreign women that Mrs. Obama clearly took advantage of. But the outrage is caused by the fact that when Mrs. Obama visited Indonesia, that Muslim Asian country, she did indeed cover her head. And perhaps Mrs. Obama wanted to make a point about the difference in the treatment of women in the two countries. In Saudi Arabia, women need the expressed written permission of men for most things and are banned from doing other things outright, such as driving. And in Indonesia, none of those restrictions apply to women. But the fact that Mrs. Obama stepped out in Saudi Arabia without her head covered just shows that the First Lady of the United States continues to chart her own way. The last number up today is 60. That's the number of years that the state of Florida wanted to put Marissa Alexander away for. The black mother of two fired a shot in the air to protect herself from her estranged husband who was abusive. He attempted to beat her up just days after she gave birth to a premature baby. Now back in 2013, Florida sentenced her for 20 years for that incident. She won on an appeal and then Florida decided to retry her to put her away for six decades. Well, yesterday, luckily, Marissa Alexander pled to a string of lesser charges and will spend the next two years under house arrest. She'll be able to leave only for work and for doctor's appointments. But her case became a rallying point for those fighting against domestic violence because it underscored the reason why half of all women who experience domestic violence don't report it out of the fear that the law will be turned against them. Well, the good news is that she was set free, but her case underscores the fact that when it comes to fighting domestic violence in America, we still have a long way to go.